irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to L.A. Talk Radio. You're listening to What Women Want with Judy Goss, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in once again to What Women Want Talk Radio. I'm Judy Goss, and I'm here with my co-host, Kristen West, and our show tonight is Expanding Your Mind Power. We have a fascinating guest on this evening. I'm so happy that I get so excited still after three years of doing this show. Jennifer Longmore is a business energetics expert, and I'm thinking she's going to expand people's minds pretty quickly, which is really amazing when you think about it, when you're just talking to someone. We tend not to use all of our brain power. I realize that. And sometimes we're, you know, some of us are using it in the wrong way, which is why we brought Jennifer on the show. Besides the fact that she was on our show recently and Kristen and I just couldn't get enough of her. There was just wasn't enough time in the show. So we're going to be bringing her on in just a few minutes. And in the meantime, I want to thank all of you. We've been on the air for three years and we've hit over 70, 791,000 downloads, 791,000, but who's counting? <laughs> we, like I said, I still get so excited every single show, and I know you do also. And I want to give a shout out to Pamela Horton from Maven's Connections for not only promoting the heck out of everything I do, but connecting me with some of the greatest people on the planet, like Jennifer tonight. So thank you, Pamela, for that. Everyone go follow her on Pam G. Horton on Twitter. If you haven't subscribed to us, please do so on iTunes or visit our archives on LA Talk Radio's website, which you may be listening now if you're listening live, latalkradio.com. You'll hear some of our celebrity guests who have been with us recently, like former Today Show anchor Jenna Wolf, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, Dr. Christine Carlson, Gene Chatsky is coming on with us in a couple of weeks. I can't wait for that. And who can forget former O.J. Simpson prosecutor Marsha Clark, who's been on our show a couple of times. We are so blessed. We always have captivating conversations and the most incredible guests, if I do say my, so myself. And you know what? Some of the best shows have been with women you may not even have heard of, but all are each. They're so phenomenal in their very own ways and with their inspiring stories. And that's what we're about, right? Learning from each other's stories. What women want is more amazing women. And we seem to find them every show. Okay. A little bit about my background. Besides being the host of this awesome radio show, I'm also a TV host a regular contributor on NBC and Fox. I was just on Channel 11, actually, uh, down in Atlanta this past week, talking about how we totally underestimate our talents. I'm also an entrepreneur. I founded the nationally acclaimed What Women Want Networking Group six whole years ago with several live chapters spanning from coast to coast. I'm a St. Martin's Press author and freelance writer for New York Lifestyles Magazine. And the most important job of all, I'm the mom of twin girls who just turned 13 years old. We have, yes, two teenage girls in the house, the same age, pretty wild. (laughs) What Women Want Networking, the same name as our show. We are hosting our Spirit of Women National Conference in Atlanta at the Weston Peachtree Plaza, October 7th through 8th. You may want to get tickets now. Go to spiritofwomenconference.com. We're having speakers and celebrities traveling from all across the country and even Canada. They're going to blow your mind. And guess what? Our guest who is about to come on the show is one of them. You'll get a glimpse of what Spirit of Women is all about from her. So go buy your tickets. They're starting to sell quickly and we're closing the red rope after we get to 300 attendees. Spiritofwomenconference.com. I can't wait to see you all there. Okay, let's talk about Kristen West. Kristen is my amazing co-host of the show. She's my other host, I should say. She's an award-winning actress and producer. Her film, Seeking Valentina, has been announced as an official selection at the Hollywood Dreams Film Festival, which is coming up in Las Vegas. She can also be seen in the upcoming films, The Spirit Room, Hell's Kitty, and The Lich. I'll do out later last. I'll do out later this year. Kristen, fill us in on the scoop from Hollywood. Well, it's exciting. Um, I'm going to be. <laughs> I'm actually going to be in Las Vegas later in the month, going to the Hollywood Dreams International Film Festival. So I've been getting ready for that, which is also congratulations. By the way, that's amazing. Well, thank you. Um, you know, it, you have to you have to take the bull by the horns and make your dreams come true. And and Hollywood Dreams is certainly doing that for me. So I'm so excited to get to show Seeking Valentina there later this month. 
Well, I don't know if Hollywood's doing that for you. You're doing that for Hollywood. Let's flip that perspective right there. Interesting. Well, you know, it's 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 what you bring to the table. It, it's important. And I'm, I'm so glad to talk to, to Jennifer about this later because I think she has some very interesting perspectives on how to reframe our thoughts so that we can be maximally successful. Yeah, and I can sure as heck tell you how to think and what to do. But sometimes when it comes to myself, I'm not so good at telling myself, <laughs> you know, catching myself and, and flipping that perspective around. So that's when we need someone like Jennifer. So let's bring her on. She was a forensic investigator and she turned she's a forensic invest was a former forensic investigator. Sorry. And she is now North America's sole purpose expert. She's a three time best selling author. And serial entrepreneur has, who has learned a thing or two about creating time, wow, and financial freedom, running businesses aligned to your purpose. You can learn more about her by visiting souljourneys.ca. Welcome back to the show, Jennifer. <laughs> Thank you. Can I just say how fun that was to be a fly on the wall for the last few minutes? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I want to do that all the time. I want to do it all the time. Yeah, that's quite a compliment. You know, we're just so fascinated with what you do. And, and it's funny when you're talking about this kind of topic that it's just things come out of your mouth. And then you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> we are saying that on purpose or not? I'm not sure. But um, I mm-hmm. want to first thank you for supporting us at the Spirit of Women Conference as one of our leading presenters. Very exciting. I'm thrilled and honored to have you uh, down there speaking. And, you know, in your intro, I, I kind of fumbled over the words because it's <laughs> it's really fascinating to me that you were a forensic investigator. I want to know how uh-huh. you went from that to what you do now and, and, you know, let us in on what exactly you do do. Well, thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, <laughs> There's a lot more in common. Uh, you know, I was trained in as a forensic social worker, and so I did all of the forensic investigations for, you know, getting uh, reliable um, uh, statements from victims and, and interviewing perpetrators and so on, spent a lot of time in court. And I learned a lot about human behavior, and it really trained me for what I do now. It's just that now I have voluntary clients, whereas then I had a lot of people telling me where to go. Ah, like a corporate job. Go now, it's probably just behind my back. But uh, no, I actually I had pretty good clients back then, even in spite of how you know heated certain situations were and how intense they were. But I learned a lot about human behavior and what drives people, and um, you know the the things that really hold us back. And I really learned. I mean, spiritually, I knew this, and I taken Reiki and all these kind of things while I was in forensics, which made it even more challenging to be in it because um, it was incongruent with the life I was creating. Here I was trying to create a peaceful life and I was always working in chaos and my adrenals were burned out and so on. But I learned that at the end of the day, all of us, regardless of our sexual orientation or whatever, skin color, etc., we all want to be loved and accepted and we all fear abandonment and rejection. So if we have that as a starting place, then we know how to create more of what we do want and less of what we don't want. Now, a lot of your career or a lot of what you do is based Mm -hmm. on being intuitive, right? Mm -hmm. So when did you start to learn that you were so intuitive? Did you know already when you were in forensic, working in forensics? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. That always yeah. helps if you realize uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it helps, but also frustrating when red tape doesn't always work with you. Right. But I knew at a very young age, I knew before I even had words, and I didn't really know how to put it into a box and put a pretty little bow around. But a lot of my family was very intuitive as well. My uh, maternal grandfather used to solve crimes with the police as a psychic medium. So when I went into forensics, I had some pretty crazy cases and I had a woman who was also named Jennifer, whose partner um, made her disappear at the time she was a missing person, but we all knew what happened. The writing was on the wall. It was a matter of gathering evidence to prove what he had done. So I had a really strong intuitive head around what had happened and it was a 
pretty bizarre situation. So it wasn't like I was just trying to make it up in my head. And I had called my grandfather just to, you know, see what had happened and to see if I was on the right track because the police I was working with, they were actually very open to me telling them what happened, but I wanted to make sure I didn't lead them astray. And um, so my grandfather actually picked up on a different case thinking he was picking up on what I was asking and we ended up each solving a crime, <laughs> one unexpected and one kind of expected, I guess you could say. So he got the exact coordinates for the location of a body, which the police did find and were able to start doing forensics around that. With my case, we I received a download very strongly that he had um, put her body through a wood chopper but had to bury her skull because it wouldn't go through the wood chopper and that's actually what came out in court and it's public information so you know people can go and look that up if they really want the, the details but can i ask you a question yeah, it, was, it was helpful but also very you know i mean if a judge decided that they didn't want certain information what were you going to do jennifer can i ask you a question because i i know right now just hearing yeah. you recount this I had a very visceral reaction to just describing you describing what happened to this poor victim. When you intuited mm-hmm. this, did you have a strong physical reaction? Did you cringe? I mean, that must be, if you do, that must be really hard on your body. It can be for sure. My grandfather used to get it way worse because he would experience the crime through the lens of the perpetrator, but also through the victim. Uh, total visceral reaction on both sides it was very intense for him so because of that I learned from him and for anyone that's listening that's psychic or a medium or just very empathic um, what I did was I created a contract basically with my guides with an understanding that I could be given information without having to experience it and so that's why I'm able to, to speak about it in a very well seemingly neutral way obviously it's it affects us. It was very troubling to find other um, women that were in hiding actually down in the States because this happened just outside of Toronto. And there were women in hiding in the States from this guy because they knew it was inevitable that one day he would do the same to them. So it was it was a pretty intense <laughs> case. And at the time, I think I was like 23 or 24 years old. So it was certainly not an appropriate case for my age and level of experience that that kind of stuff makes you grow up very very quickly you're talking about expanding your your mind <laughs> that probably did it pretty fast there Welcome that those the show, ex- everyone, if you're experiences <laughs> yeah i mean that's intense oh it's so fun finding all this stuff out about you so okay <laughs> you're in you're in, doing your forensics investigating you're in the government mm-hmm. red tape of a world and and fighting against yourself so how did you get from there into now helping people build businesses with that creativity and intuitive talent that you have how did you mm-hmm. what, what like what, how did you get a lightning bolt that oh my gosh I gotta you know get out of here and start I did my- have a lightning bolt I I really never planned on going into that particular area of work, but it was great conditioning for me. I learned a lot from it, but um, it was exhausting. And you know, wait, you never planned to go into issue, forensics? Right? I can talk about it. Well, I knew I was going to go into forensics. I just didn't know I was going to be investigating crimes against children. Oh my gosh. So it was very intense. I kind of had different routes I could go, and I went into that route because that's where the jobs were at the time. And um, so it was very intense and cases stayed with you. I can talk about it with neutrality now, but at the time, oh my goodness, you just didn't sleep. You were constantly worried about, you know, what, uh, did, did I miss anything? Did I, you know, dot this I, cross this T? And, um, and so that was a lot to take in in my 20s. And I just woke up one day and I thought, geez, like this, I wanted to... Um, to lead jobs and I thought well I don't want to keep being the person that moves around just to follow a job and there's got to be more to life than this do I really want to live for the weekend for the next 40 years of my life like is this really what I want for myself just having enough to get by either just enough to get by or not quite enough to get by every month 
because with the JLB, which stands for just over broke, that's literally the reality that you create. And uh, because someone's giving you a glass ceiling, right? Someone's saying, here's what you're worth. And then you say, I agree. <laughs> so you're double binding this uh, uh, understanding that this is your cap. You can't go any higher than that. And so there's something that happens energetically when we agree to that. And I'm certainly not judging anyone that's had a job. I've had a gazillion in my life. I really get it. And I know what it's like to wake up on Monday morning and think how many times can I hit snooze before I have to either call in sick. And if I do, what was the excuse I gave last time or you know, get out of bed and just go and try to suck it up for another week. So, um, so I had this epiphany and I realized, no, this isn't what I want for my life. I, I can't imagine that I was put on the planet for this. I know that I'm meant to do more. So you better start getting your stuff together, lady. <laughs> so <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I started making a plan. I started you know, learning how to work with energy differently so I could start focusing on manifesting rather than just healing. With Reiki, I would learned a lot about how to heal things, but I hadn't really learned a lot about how to manifest and how to get clear on my vision and what I did want instead of focusing on what I didn't want. Most of us are trained to focus on what we don't want. And it's actually important for us to know what we don't want. It's just important for us not to hang out in that space. So on the flip side of what we don't want is what we do want. And we just need to learn how to, to flip that rather than going down the rabbit hole of what we don't want. And um, so all of a sudden, you know, I just kind of went into work one day and thought I can't do this anymore. So I resigned. I took another job in forensics, but it was investigating um, sexual harassment claims in the workplace and fraud and just different corporate kind of things. So it was very light. <laughs> I know it sounds heavy, but it didn't really happen much. So I didn't really have much to do, which was weird. But I needed that. I needed a true nine to five that paid me the same salary so I could bridge the gap and have some money in the bank to be able to start a business. And to just detox, right, and get my adrenals healthy again and have time to go to networking events and just start spending time with entrepreneurs and getting used to the lingo and figuring out where do I fit in all of this and what's what's my thing going to be? I know I have skills to bring to the table, but how am I going to package this? Mm -hmm. So I'm really glad that I did that. And then at some point, really, there's no perfect time for anyone that's an entrepreneur listening right now. You know that. There's just really never, there's some times that are not as great as others, <clears throat> but there's certainly not a perfect time. And at some point, we just have to take the leap and trust that the net's going to catch us, that we wouldn't receive all this guidance to go in a certain direction or to launch a business if the universe was just punking us. So, uh, that was kind of the nutshell version. <laughs> okay. And, and the business energetics. Now, we have a lot of people listening who I know aren't going to really know what this entails. You, you, you mm -hmm. call yourself a business energetics expert. Let's define what business energetics is, if you don't mind. I would say business energetics really is about how we do anything is how we do everything. And how we do the small stuff is how we do the big stuff. So knowing that our mind creates our reality and knowing that business is about 90% mindset and 10% action, because once the mind's on board, action is actually very easy to take. Then it's really important for us to manage our vibration, right? To make sure that we're hanging around high vibe people, ingesting high vibe food, um, you know, having high vibe thoughts really just being in a space of, of being magnetic so that that is what actually helps us in business as opposed to constantly hustling and grinding and burning our adrenals out because we think that hard work is what makes us money. It's actually not hard work. It's alignment that makes us money in business. So the more aligned we are, the more in integrity we are, the more that our thoughts and our actions are aligned to what we do want, the more these things show up. And not only do they show up, but they actually come to us rather than us constantly being in pursuit of them. What's the first now you, go ahead, Kristen. What's the first step to really getting in into that alignment? Is it is it focusing more on what you want or is it eliminating the negative thoughts? Is it thinking about yourself? differently what what's the first like actionable step someone can do to 
sort of get themselves into that space more? Yeah, it's certainly helpful to get clear on what you don't want. Sometimes we're unhappy, we are stuck in this place of misery, we don't know why. So write down all the reasons why we're not happy. What's, what do we feel is not making us happy? And then go into solving types of questions that begin with how and what. You know, what can I do to create less of this? What can I do to create more of this? How can I stop, you know, attracting this? How can I start attracting such and such? And that way, uh, when we're focused on what we do want, it's a lot easier for for that to become clear. The universe, the way the universe works is that we receive what we're clear on. So if we're not really clear on what we're asking for, the universe can't really provide for us until we are clear. Now, you have these nine ways that we were talking about earlier to grow your conscious Mm -hmm. enterprise exponentially through the infinite power of business energetics. Now, these are ways that we can use Mm -hmm. ourselves. Yes, of course. (laughs) I'm all about. Let us in on the secrets, girlfriends. (laughs) Let's hear it. (laughs) Well, the the first one is, Kristen already brought up, is alignment. So this starts with, you know, every day I wake up at about 5 or 5.30, I write in my journal, people go, "Mm, how can you wake up that early? Well, that's time for me. And I'm very mindful that I'm going to choose how I start my day. I'm not going to allow other people to choose it for me by way of me responding to other people's thoughts and actions as opposed to me deciding what my day is going to look like and then uh, aligning my actions accordingly. So, for example, if I start my day reading emails, that's me opening up other people's agendas, right? People sending me emails as other people's agendas. Doesn't mean they're bad agendas, but I'm not, I'm choosing not to be puppeted by other people's agendas, right? I'm going to dictate what my day is. So if I decide that I'm, my day is gonna be full of peace and calm, let's just say that's my intention for the day, then I might not even open emails. Or I might email my team and say, hey, today I need a break. So unless there's anything major coming through, can you just please manage my inbox today? I'm not I wanna, saying I do that I all the time, but that might be what em- I want. I want to emphasize how, how important this is because I didn't realize it really until you taught me, honestly. <laughs> Full disclosure, I've had a, several private sessions with Jen, and I didn't believe honestly that you know this whole waking up routine and everything was a major factor in how your day would go and and I've tested it many times I've woken up doing it and then I've woken up not doing it and then I've woken up doing it for a week or two Mm -hmm. and then I've woken up not doing it for a few days or even a day and man it really busts you up when you don't set your intentions when you don't give yourself that time I remember you were telling me on one of our calls you know start the day by just drinking water and feeling it go down your throat and feeling it in your body and really getting grounded and 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 peaceful and you know really kind of setting the day by by starting out that way because i used to just grab my phone and like you said i would just get up and get into the emails and start going and going and going and and that really didn't help anything and wow what a difference when you really just kind of have time to move through that that piece that you know I feel like it was for me a missing piece honestly in my day mm-hmm. and it's it's easy to fall into that right and when we're coming from a place and it's unconscious when we're coming from a place of lack and limitation we're instantly going to the emails because we think that's where the money is we have FOMO which is fear of missing out what am I missing who am I letting down where might I be dropping the ball where might I miss a sale where might X, right, if I don't respond to emails right now, if I don't send emails right now. And if anything is really 911 to your business, like for example, I've gotten emails that have said, hey, it looks like your website's been hacked. Okay, I forward it to my team, I put in the subject line priority so that she knows, like, oh, I need to answer this right now. (laughs) And uh, what else can I do, right? I can have a little fit and whatever, but the reality is my website's been hacked. It will get fixed. 
yeah, I might lose some sales, but people are, who are my ideal clients, when they land on that site and see that it's been hacked, they're going to know, oh, it's been hacked. This isn't a reflection of Jennifer and how she does business. And they're going to come back or they're going to email me or whatever, right? But most people will be like, oh, my God, my website's been hacked. This is terrible. And they'll call everyone and they'll post it on Facebook and they'll just create a frenetic energy and they'll turn two minutes into a full day of drama because they're not managing their energy. They haven't set the intention for what's going to happen. So while my website's getting fixed, do you think I'm like, well, I guess I can't have sales then for the next two hours because my website's... No. I'm emailing people or I'm posting things on social media or I'm picking up the phone and following up with people or I'm, you know, inviting people to have a conversation with me about how they can work deeper together or I'm marketing out the next plan of how I'm going to, you know, generate income for the following month or whatever it is, right? Like, what am I going to do? Kristen, what do you think? Well, I think I think what you're saying is so true. You do have to you have to have your own agenda and honor that agenda and also understand that other people may have their agendas which may or may not cohere with yours and i know i take a a few minutes out in the morning not necessarily at 5 (laughs) a.m but um i take i i my day begins at different times because i'm that kind of animal but um you know, you do have to really set your your game and your strategy for that day. So I, I think alignment is important. What's the next key? I'm curious. Oh, geez. Well, yeah, the first one is alignment, where we're managing our mindset, setting our intentions, and so on, having a practice. The next thing is being really clear on our message. Think about, and this is going to be important for anyone listening that's going to be at the conference, What's the question we dread the most when we go to any kind of conference or a networking event? What do you do? What do you do? (laughs) It's like the most boring question ever. It's an important question and people mean well and they're genuinely curious a lot of times. Sometimes they're not. Well, think of all of the responses that you've gotten from people over the years. And some people are so nervous that rather than reading the cues of it's time to zip it so someone else can speak, they just keep going on and on and on. And they want to list out all their qualifications or they want to, you know, just go on for 20 minutes about their business because they're not clear. People who are clear know how to market their business in a way that the person on the other side is very, very clear as well. And even if they do not see themselves fitting into your business, they are already thinking of other people they can refer to you because you've made it so clear. And there's a saying in business that clarity equals cash, and that really is true. If we're not clear on who we're marketing to, who we're serving them, and how we're serving them, then how can we expect people to find us? And how can we expect people to refer to us? And how can we expect clients that are already working with us to articulate why they should also sign up for something as well? Okay, alignment, clarity, what's the third one? Then the next one is once you're clear on your message, be your message. For the love of all things holy, be your message. Do you know how annoying it is for me to have people contact me saying, Jennifer, I want to hire you to do private coaching on money. And then I see that, but I can't hire you because I'm on the verge of claiming personal bankruptcy. And then I see them on a telesummit with the seven strategies to make seven figures in seven months with yours truly that you know, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, like if you want to know why you're not making money in your business, you're not aligned. It's okay to talk about money, but stay in the lane that makes sense for you to stay in. If you are a chronic smoker and drinker, probably going to be hard for you to sell your nutrition services. It doesn't mean you don't know anything about nutrition. It just means that people are looking for alignment. And it's also internally, even if we intellectually think that we're on board with our message, if internally we feel like we're off, we can't pull it off. People feel that vibe from us. They, they don't know what it is. They just feel like there's an incongruence and they just keep circling us rather than hitting the bullseye because they're waiting for us to create alignment. Well, I think, I think, you know, one of the things that fascinates me as an actor, because I have to study people, is that gap between what people say 
and what people actually do. And, Mm -hmm. you know, being healthy is having the most narrow gap possible. That's being an integrity. When you have a wide gap Mm -hmm. between what you say and what you do, that creates a lot of unhealthiness. Now, that's juicy to play when you're in a drama, but that's not, that's not you know, juicy in your life. That's not life-affirming, and I can imagine that that would cause a lot of disruption when you're trying to build something if you're in that unhealthy space where that giant gap exists. That mm-hmm. must be it, c- complicated yeah. in, a, in an industry such as yours, Kristen, where you have to be other people, <laughs> yeah. No. I mean that's that's really, you know, a, a mind twist there, isn't it? Well, you know, I told someone the other day. I said someone someone who's helping me out and uh professionally and I said, "You know, when I'm the sanest person in, in a group of people, that scares me." Because I, <laughs> because I'm the girl that gets that screams at people in a shower. <laughs> And gets paid to do that um you know but yeah you have to really kind of this is me this is the character this is what i bring to the character i am not the character after the after the tape stops i have to sometimes gather my energy back in and remember this is baseline Kristen. this is Kristen as a psycho freak you know <laughs> you know it's <laughs> it's a delicate balance but people like like Jennifer so aptly pointed out is there's this this major cognitive dissonance where where you you are Jekyll and Hyde and I I try and guard against that in my own life as much as possible but that that's that's a major thing with people is is saying one thing and doing another and and you're you're absolutely right Jennifer people pick it up you may think that you're you know have a silver tongue and can talk your way through it or you know the lingo well enough to get around it but people feel it you know everybody has intuition to a degree I think what it's whether or not you Mm -hmm. choose to to use it so so what's that so being your message obviously you know that that's 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 the third one what's 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 magic number four well when you are your message it makes number four really easily and so many people get stuck in being your message right and they are truly clueless like i don't understand why i'm not getting business and meanwhile it's so obvious to an outsider but not obvious to them once we are our message that helps us be magnetic so we really want to work with activating the energy of magnetism, right? Because why would we be in a masculine pursuing energy when we can be in a feminine receiving energy? In feminine energy, we still make requests, right? But we're also able to receive. So for me, what I find is, let's just say that I want to um, do a speaking gig, right? On a live stage. I might put out three um, you know, proposals to folks But then all of a sudden I get a whole bunch of unsolicited ones because I've activated that energy, but I'm also willing to receive. So when we learn how to make attracting clients really easy, when we use marketing that's aligned to magnetize people to us by just being ourselves, by the way, because people want, they don't necessarily want to be us, but they like the fact that the more we're showing up as our authentic selves, the more it gives them permission to show up in their authentic self, whatever that looks like for them. And that's really what sells because people buy based on the know, like, and trust factor. And that's very easy to create because you have three pillars to that, right? You have to create the no factor, which is people need to know what you do. So that's why you have to be clear on your message and they need to know how to find you. They need to know you exist and they need to know how to find you. So that's always in our control and we should always be working on that because there's seven and a half billion people on the planet and I guarantee that seven and a half billion people don't know that we exist. (laughs) So it's our job to get out there and let people know how we can help them or how we can, you know, provide them a product that's going to create more of something or help them solve a problem. So you could almost say be magnetic by be magnetic by being authentic. Yes which I know is overused in the sense that people kind of get tired of that authentic word, whatever that, whatever another term is for that. Be real, (laughs) dude. (laughs) Yeah. Be real, dude. Hashtag. Sorry, not sorry. 
Well, you know, no, no man and no like woman hashtag. is an island. You know, no man and no woman is an island, and none of us are, com- we're all unique, but none of us are special. We're not a species unto ourselves. So you, I think what, yeah. what, what I think you're highlighting more than anything is finding that tribe. You know, you, you, have, yeah. you have a tribe based on, on what your principles and what you believe in. I have a tribe. Judy has a tribe. Our, and all three of us have a, have a, a sort of a, a shared tribe of, of feminine empowerment. And that's a really wonderful and unique thing. And I think that's part of what you're speaking to as well. And I liked what you said about, you know, welcoming that feminine energy. Because I don't think in our culture enough, and I'm talking about, you know, dominant West, dominant Western, you know, and even American culture, we're just, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's 2017 and, and Wonder Woman is, is probably the movie of the year. We, we have languished a long time, not having adequate role models of feminine empowerment and also learning and Uh learning how to receive as a, a good thing instead of, you know, punching and crawling, and climbing and and you know slithering our way through things just to get to this nebulous idea of the top whatever it is and i think a lot of women don't have adequate models of learning how to receive things because you know and even even in our communication and the way we up until you know i would even say the with very few exceptions up until you know, the late 50s, early 60s, you know, very few women had their mother teaching them about business. It was usually their father or their husband or their brother or some other male teaching them about business instead of having a woman mentor in business. So we have all of these things that we're still trying to figure out as women how to use our natural energies to to really empower us, our, our sort of where our native energies, instead of trying to grab and grasp and pull and push. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, I could. Yes, I totally agree. It's, I think uh, that also that lends to what you're looking you were... up. How many billionaires there are, right? Female billionaires. We love it, you, it's Oprah. It's so disproportionate. Right. Yeah, I think that lends also, uh, Kristen, to what you're saying that Jennifer said earlier that it's just. You know, we feel like the mantra of, you know, you have have to work hard to make money type of thing, which is definitely how I was raised. We need to let go of that. And and that's really, I I think, one of the main things that, you know, Jennifer is about. Right. Jennifer is is, is really that kind of letting go, having these, you know, Mm -hmm. these points and this advice that you're giving us, but really letting go enough to to make it happen. And that's another concept that I really had a hard time Mm -hmm. understanding for years. Yeah. And at the heart of who we are on a very deep soul level, we already come onto this planet being deserving and worthy and having access to abundance and all of the things that we hear in the woo-woo community. And then we get programs, right? We pick up on stuff when we're in the womb. We learn a lot in the first five years of our life because there's so much um, <clears throat> suggestibility at that age. And we're, we're trying to figure out the world through the lens of what we're seeing. So whatever we're seeing around us and whatever language our parents are engaged in and, and how they're showing up, they don't even have to say anything directly to us, but by way of how they're modeling behavior and how they're modeling their relationship with money and male and female dynamics and all kinds of stuff determines how we view the world. And then we fast forward to the time to start a business and all of that stuff comes with us. So we start blocking our ability to receive clients because we're afraid we're going to attract, you know, unconsciously afraid of attracting family members that are critical or judging or, you know, whatever we experienced when we were younger. So we say we want a business and we want to make money and we want to serve clients, but the inner child goes into protective mode and says, no, 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 I can't let any more people in. That's just one example, right, of many. Jennifer, I have to tell you, I, 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 I had a slight giggle just now because you said the woo-woo community. And I really <laughs> admire you <laughs> because, because there's such true, you, uh-huh. are, you, you know, there, there's a sort of, you know, vast array of new paradigm thinking and, and out there there's this veritable, you know, smorgasbord of it. And it's really big and brave and bad and wonderful for you to, to have the sense of humor. Some people just completely lack a sense of humor about 
any of that and i really <laughs> i really no really i mean it it, it, it takes you got some balls lady i mean <laughs> you know it, i it's, have big lady balls you have big lady balls and i appreciate i have big lady balls myself and and so i appreciate that yes, that, I can, can tell. that candor <laughs> and humor because so many times you know people will oh those are the woo woo people <laughs> you know people dismiss it's sort of a dismissive yeah. thing but i'm so glad that you embrace it and you know grab it by those lady balls as it were but but yeah but okay so what's number five Okay, so we we learn how to magnetize things to us in number four. The fifth one is to really leverage the three golden keys of business, which is connection, community, and collaboration. Those are all feminine energies. So connection, community, and collaboration is in our nature to build those three. We re- and men enjoy that too. As women, we really are naturally geared towards that. It's it's very easy for us to create that. Sometimes we have programming for sure that says, oh, you shouldn't trust other people or whatever the case may be, but inherently we're drawn to be a part of those three things. So this means that if we can learn how to really work with connection, so connecting to our clients, connecting to our tribe, going to networking events without running away or having verbal diarrhea or whatever we're going to do, right, that isn't serving learning how to build a tribe of our own, which is community, and collaborating. There's no such thing as competition. Yes, I get three-dimensionally. We use this term called competition. I have competition. The two of you have competition. But I don't really view it that way because I do feel like I exist in my own bubble in the sense that there's only one of me, so people are either going to take it or leave it, and I don't, I can't control that. I can just keep showing up as me. I'm hosting the party. If you enjoy the party, stay as long as you'd like but I'm deciding what the party favors are at the party and what the music's going to be. If I want to play 80s one hit wonders for a whole day, then that's my choice. And if that irritates you, then feel free to go to the party down the street and come back and check on the music, you know, <laughs> in a week. <laughs> um, we're having a party here and I might throw a block party and I might have a whole bunch of my neighbors joining me on this block party. But the party wow. goes on with or without whoever is going to attend. Yeah, no, I, t- I totally agree with that, too. I mean, even at my own networking party <laughs> event that we're having down in Atlanta, I mean, I, I, I have at least one vendor table, you know, of that's a networking company. I mean, we're working together, you know, we're, we're working together to get both of us out there and, and it's all good. I mean, we should be helping each other. And as always, when we're talking to you, the, the show, this 50 minute show kind of all of a sudden wraps itself <laughs> into a minute and a half. Um, so we only have about, let's see, maybe five minutes left. So I, want, I definitely want to get, I'm writing these down. I want to get to the ninth um, point. So I'm we're on number six. Then. Yeah, number six. Yeah. So you definitely have to have a crystal clear business model and offers that go with it or products if you're selling products. But, and they have to be aligned with your message and the essence of who you are, just as we talked about before. Then we want to learn how to work with universal laws. So we want to work with the universal law of attraction, manifestation, balance, rhythmic interchange, right? What goes in comes out. We can't hoard all the money and we can't keep spending all the money. So how do we find that balance of letting things ebb and flow? And how do we also work with the law of reciprocity, right? When we give, we always receive. Not because we do it to receive, but it's just kind of the nature of learning how to work with these laws to have the universe working on our side so we do much less of the heavy lifting than folks that are, you know, still doing business the old way. Creating a business partnership with your future self. Your future self already knows how to create what you want to create. So if you want to create a seven-figure business, your future self already knows how to create that. They're already in the future. They've already downloaded the wisdom and the inner and outer shifts of how to make that happen. So having that conversation with your future self allows you to bridge the gap between your present and your future. And I know that sounds really woo and you are welcome for that. (laughs) And then we have to implement. Hold on a second. Nobody takes it away. Hold on. Create a business partnership with your future self. Woo! Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Woo! 
I get uh, it. You got to dig into that one just a little bit. I know we don't have a lot of time. You're getting left, all woo up in your business. <laughs> just get it out there, girl. You got to describe that one in a little more in detail. Okay. Well, in a nutshell, we know that there's no space and time, right? Other than how we measure it in three-dimensional terms. But in the grand scheme of things, there's no such thing as time and space. So time is irrelevant. And so there's all kinds of aspects of us that exist you know, we're just kind of spread all over the place. And just as our past self has wisdom, right, that we're ideally learning from and bringing forward into our present and future, there's a part of us that's already projected itself out into the, you know, a month from now. So a month from now, I already know, well, two months from now, I already know exactly what I'm going to say and how many laughs I'm going to get at the What Women Want conference because I'm already there. So I have to have a conversation with her and say, okay, what shift did I make internally and what tangible things did I do externally to allow for that to happen? And I'm going to get the downloads for that because my inner wisdom already knows. Whether it's really my future self or not, it's really just my inner wisdom, right? That knows how I need to show up to create certain results. But if I keep focusing on where I want to be, then I'm going to get there a lot more quickly because my focus is on what I want rather than what I don't want. Got it. Well, yeah, it would be the same as if you had 40 pounds to release and you decide you wanted to, then you would ask your thin self, you know, what did we do internally and externally to create this new reality? Hmm. Okay. And what number are we on? <laughs> I, I, I lost well, I, track I of the number. Then we have to find inspired that was action, eight, which is right? really Cre- just implement. With, create your business partnership with your future self. That was number eight. I think we're on we're on ten now. We're on ten. Oh, what was Maybe. nine? I think All we right. keep talking. What's the next one? Why don't we go up to seventy seven? <laughs> um, Works well, for me. So we have to move things into action, right? So it's all fine to be theoretical and have a plan. I have colleagues that plan till the cows come home, but never implement. And all these million dollar ideas that they keep saying they're downloading are worth nothing. A banana peel is probably worth more than their plan because they're not implementing it. Hmm. And then we have to have support. We have to have accountability partners, whether it be your colleagues or being part of a formal sort of online group. I definitely believe in having a mentor because a mentor's job is to save you the time, money, and energy of making the mistakes that you're going to make without one. It's just the way that it is. I wished I had had a mentor way sooner than I did. I would have grown way quicker. I would have been in a far different place than I am now had I known enough to hire a mentor, you know, in my first year as opposed to waiting five years in. Mm. But you're in a good place. I mean, you, I feel like you've succeeded in what you really set out to do, but you feel like it took you too long? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of reasons why it took me too long. <clears throat> One was that I bottlenecked, right? I, I grew so quickly that it didn't occur to me that I could hire someone. And when it did, then I had the story of, well, who's going to understand what I do? Who's going to be able to articulate it? How are they going to handle my clients? How are they possibly going to be an extension of me? And so I just sat in this bottlenecked, very uncomfortable thing. And the thing about bottles is that there's so much pressure that rises to the top, right? (laughs) That it starts to get very (laughs) claustrophobic and uncomfortable. Someone has to come and pull the cork out for you. And um, I, that was when I finally realized I had to hire a coach. That's when my business grew, my income quadrupled and um, everything changed from there. But then, you know, that business model wasn't sustainable either. Fortunately, I, I am highly intuitive. And so my guides will give me guidance that is laughable. Like when I was told to go and invest in real estate, I thought it was hilarious that I was guided to build a real estate empire. And well, that paid off really, 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 Here you really, are. really, really well, very quickly. And, and unfortunately, <laughs> my sound engineer doesn't agree that there is no time and space because they're telling me that we only have basically a minute left. So I want to get in where we can find you. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I think you're fantastic. And I know Kristen learned a lot too. And all of our listeners, where can we find you? Souljourneys.ca? Souljourneys.ca. I spend a lot of time on Facebook as well. 
And uh, I also have a group called The Purpose Posse on Facebook. I only share that because, of course, I check my website and my team manages my website. But uh, I do spend a, uh, probably a great deal of time more than I should on Facebook. But I just really <laughs> like connecting with people and, and saying hi and, and, you know, being Aunt Jen basically on Facebook. So, yes, that's where people can find me. And, of course, if they're coming to the conference, I will do my best to bring my lady balls with me. <laughs> and um, <laughs> elicit a few laughs from the stage. I love it. And there's all kinds of things on the website, too, that they can sign up for, you know, for with trainings, free trainings and, and all kinds of, you know, fun stuff that you do, Akashic Records and just so many talents. And I just really appreciate you coming on the show and sharing your time and, and your wisdom with us. Well, thank you. I appreciate the invitation. I love doing this with you and look forward to uh, coming back again when it makes sense for us to have another chitty chat on the radio. Definitely. And I can't wait to see you at the conference also. Thank you. And Kristen, we have another show next week. Yay. It's true. <laughs> I'm so excited. You're bringing a special guest in the studio. And everyone who's out there listening, thank you so much for listening. And we will see you next week. You're listening to What Women Want with Judy Goss, only on LA Talk Radio.